It's that stage in the cycle where we don't get any sleep. There is news every single day of something that should pump the market, something that should collapse the market. Meanwhile, the market does what the market does. We had a new all-time high for Bitcoin overnight. Now we're finding some resistance here. It's $72,500. We've also got billionaires selling their stocks in the market, which is leading to a little bit of a worry around another looming recession. I want to unpack that for you guys today as we see Bitcoin sit here at 72K. What does it mean for Bitcoin? What does it mean for cryptocurrencies right now in the cycle? Could we be experiencing this cycle ending earlier? Let's unpack that today. It's your home of macro cycle analysis. We're covering Bitcoin, crypto, stock markets, and of course, real estate. So you can get a holistic view of the markets and not get too caught up in the degenerate bubble of the old coin space. Thanks again for your support on the channel. 2024 is our year to go to 400,000. So thank you very much to, for sharing the content with your friends and family so they don't get caught up in the everyday nonsense of the news and media personalities out there. Today is the day that the free crypto and economic report goes out. Link is in the top of the video description. You'll see a screen like this, name, email address, away you go. You've got the free report coming out. All right, billionaires are selling. Type that into Google, people are posting videos about it. We wanna see what is going on because essentially we can see charts lining up with billionaires selling their stock coming into other peaks in the market. But I wanna show you some of the other data as always because the news wants to tell us one thing and fear sells. Now you've got Jeff Bezos selling, you've got Mark Zuckerberg selling, Jamie Dimon has also sold some of his stock for the first time since he uh, was in power here two decades ago. So it's the CEO of JP Morgan, if you're unaware, 150 million. Uh, you've got Apollo Global Management also shedding some of their, uh, their stock as well. Walmart also selling 1.5 billion in a week. Trump and uh, Biden might be hitting the election this year, which I've got more on in today's video as well. So anyway, the point of it is you've got these headlines, billionaires selling stocks. Why the hell are they selling stocks? I also found this when I decided to uncover a simple Google, Google search, billionaires selling. You can come up with a few articles that are from months and months ago. These billionaires sold most of their stocks so far in 2023. And you know what, what I like to do is just unpack what is going on with the headlines? Because a lot of people have been making videos about this billionaire thing and expecting another market collapse. 21 of the world's richest people, including Larry Ellison and Rob Walton, have, un uh, have unloaded shares worth more than $9 billion combined in the first six months of the year. Think about that. This is July 2023. They unloaded the first six months of 2023. Let me demonstrate for you where that was on the chart, the first six months of 2023, there is December, 2022. Here is the region that we're looking at. Let's draw that circle there. That is the first six months of 2023. I mean, if they've been holding for decades, sure, you're up a ton of money. Why not sell some as you see the market start to recover from a cycle bottom? But look where the market's gone from that point, 22% up uh, since the end of June, 2023. So I wanna give you my thesis on this, and that is most likely it's a nothing burger. Typical of pretty much any news headline, and unfortunately this comes from Daily Mail, but you can pick it up from any other headline over here from different outlets, but essentially most likely a nothing burger. Even if there is a correction, we've been covering that uh, leading into this election year or into the bull markets, which we'll get onto the election year as well. Once we break all-time highs, the corrections are typically single digits and you get this grinding effect on the way up. You can see from 2020 when, it, when the market broke back above the all-time high prior to the COVID collapse, there was a 10.5% correction right here and that was the worst correction that the S&P 500 had seen all the way up to the peak that came in in January of 22. So basically for that entire uh, grinding period from March 2020 into the peak, that was the worst that occurred, 10%. So far the worst that we have seen in this move up from the cycle low, which is October 2022, or at least this part of the cycle, the 18.6 year mid cycle would be counted from March 2020. Just a side note there, but essentially from this point here, uh, the biggest correction was 
last year, uh, July through to October, again, 10.9%. Just driving that point home a little bit harder. Billionaires aren't always there to understand how the cycle works. You've seen me post this before. I posted it on X back in May, so coming up to 12 months ago when Elon Musk was talking about the possible recession. He was literally at the bottom of the market thinking it was going to implode recessions here, markets are over, game over. Uh, you know, we have to sit and wait this thing out for uh, a year and a half, maybe two years, which is now spring of 2024 for, for you guys in the Northern Hemisphere until this recession basically works itself out. But of course, we know from the charts back in October, right here, market has been up phenomenally. And in terms of a percentage down back to that October point, something like 35 to 40% up since that time. Now, is that affecting the overall market in terms of their feelings, not necessarily. We've still got greed going on here. Extreme greed was a week ago, extreme greed a month ago for the S&P 500. We take a look at the timeline here. It's basically been bobbing around in greed going all the way back to November. So we came out of the low in October from extreme fear, pushed up into extreme greed very quickly because of how fast this move was to the upside. And now we've been bobbing around in this greed and extreme greed for quite some time. And that leads many to believe that, well, we should be due for a significant correction. And so I go back to the point about bull markets and how they grind up. And this can cause that max pain feeling to investors as they wait for a significant correction. And sometimes it just pauses and goes sideways and they're just waiting and waiting. And then all of a sudden you get a breakout of those previous tops and it goes again. And so this could be something that we see leading up to the election. We are several months away from that in, in November, but I just wanted to point out how the markets have un unfolded leading into these elections. Now you have to put them in context with what happened in the market prior. You had the COVID bottom, big bounce out, and then you had nine weeks leading into the election. So this little white arrow here is the election, and you can see the pause happened in late August, early September. So it was about nine weeks prior to the election date, you had a top, market churned for nine weeks, basically two months, and then got going again. Go back to the previous election. We got uh, 2016, the market paused 12 weeks earlier. I may have said nine months earlier there, but basically nine weeks, two months. Uh, we got here 12 weeks prior to the election. We had the election pump up from that point. That was the Trump, um, Hillary Clinton election. And of course, away the market goes from that point. Trump thinks he's an absolute genius. It's the same story over and over again with the politicians. So a 12 week grind. Let's go back to the next, uh, the prior election to that 2012. You had a little peak out here in September, an eight week grind down to the election. Nothing too severe in terms of a decline. When you look at it from a percentage point of view, roughly sort of 6%. So still on the single digits, the market just didn't go anywhere. Everyone's waiting for this election to happen. Eight weeks, roughly two months, election happens one week down, and then the market powers away from that point again. Now we've got 2008, obviously GFC times. I'm looking at this as a little stop, stopping point in the market for that peak because prior to the election, prior to this point, Market was grinding down. You had several signals that the bull market was over, especially right through 1,400 points, the lows, and then the market dropped under those lows, came back and tested the underside, which of course is your support and resistance flip, which generally means you're going to see further weakness. And then you had a stopping point here where the market came up and bounced before the collapse. And that was roughly 12 weeks as well uh, going from the election. So from that little peak to the election, 12 weeks, roughly two to three months. You had the final low and then the market powers away from that point. That was the end of the bottom. But it definitely did not feel like this was the end at the time. It felt like there was going to be a long time that the market was going to collapse for. But of course, that's history. Market bounced straight up from that point. We had a roughly 35 weeks from this point in 2004 where the market peaked and then was grinding down until it got to the election where it broke out about 30 to 35 weeks. So if I do my numbers right, it's about an eight month period there. So it's not every time that's gonna be two to three months, but what we have seen is that typically you'll see some sort of peak, then a grinding period could be short, two to three months, could be a lot longer. So we'll have to see where that peak comes in uh, prior to the election. And then we start to see the markets take off after 
the election. So we'll come back to this in future videos. But we want to get onto Bitcoin and some of the altcoins. It's just interesting to note what happens leading into those elections, especially coming out of such significant corrections. Major one here, another mini uh, correction, which felt quite major at the time of last year. And then of course, powering away. And yesterday's video, I pointed out that we are 12 months, almost to the exact day. I believe it was the 10th or 13th of March, 2023, where the world was caving in. We had the banking crisis. That's right here, this little low in the market. Now we have powered away 35% from the banking crisis. And so there are a lot of pieces to the puzzle that we were covering here on the channel at the time, saying why these markets had to go up from that point. Nothing's guaranteed, but there was so much evidence to show that they were the lows. Now that we're in all time high prices for many markets around the world, this is where the risk increases. And now take us back to our whiteboard over here where we keep adding some more wisdom to the, the whiteboard here. Another one is as the, the risk increases, the, well, the risk increases, the higher the market goes. So the higher the market goes, the higher the risk is. That's the problem that a lot of us are facing now if we haven't got into our positions. And there's nothing more that we can really do about that apart from understanding that we could see violent corrections, which means you'd either have to trade with less capital or don't trade at all. But if you've got a plan in place to stomach those 20, 30, 40 or 50% corrections that we may see over the coming months for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, even though it might mean the cycle is not over yet, then plan accordingly get into the altcoins that you think are going to do very well from that point. I want to get into the cycle as well, uh, just after we cover off a few more pieces to the puzzle here. So what could cause the markets to either pause and take a bit of a grind as we were just looking at here for the S&P 500 as we lead into the election time, maybe the interest rates. Now, last year, there was a lot of talk that everyone was expecting interest rate cuts. You may have seen on my uh, Twitter, I talked about interest rates recently and I put it in the videos where I thought maybe the markets aren't going to see interest rate cuts. And even recently, I put in another video just looking at Jason Shapiro's take on the interest rates. Now, I thought if we don't see the interest rate cuts, that could be enough to pause the markets. As we've gone on, we haven't seen interest rates. We haven't seen a pause in the market either. So on the one hand, I got that right. I didn't think we would start to see cuts because the prices are going up. Why would the, why would the Fed cut interest rates to then fuel the fire even more? The whole point of um, having higher interest rates or five and a half percent is to try and stop the inflation, stop all the prices going up so much. And so uh, Shapiro was also talking about the possibility of the interest rates increasing. And right now we're we're beginning to see a lot of these probabilities on the interest rates shifting more towards no cuts rather than cuts. And so you, you may have recalled, you may may not recall, going back to even the end of last year, there was a, a, the probabilities were that we would see an interest rate cut at almost every single meeting throughout 2024, basically sort of seven or eight interest rate cuts. Now we are down to, uh, I believe, four. So we got potential cut in June. So no cut in March anymore, no cut in May. We got one in June, one in July, another in November, and then a possibility of one in December as well. But we're seeing these numbers shift to the right, which means the market is potentially not expecting interest rates to be cut. We went from everyone thinking that it was gonna be a cut every single month from eight, now we're down to four, and possibly by the next time we, we look at the interest rates, it might even be down to three. We've got the possibility of, July not being a cut now. It's only a couple of percent difference between a cut and a no cut. So that could shift up. Maybe over the next course of time, we see November shift from 38 and pushes into the 5% region here, as well as the interest rate, as the probabilities start to creep up. Maybe we even see December creep up as well. So that would take another cut out of the equation. And it can all flip quite quickly as well. Maybe you start to see one or two of these other months flip up and we go from four down to three, down to two which would put it more in line with uh, what was previously said at the last meeting where they thought we don't need to cut as much as we first thought. I put, posted that on a previous video as well. And so this could also help tame the market and just let it at least grind a little bit slower where we don't see those interest rate cuts. But to really put a cap on things and try and slow it down, you'd probably need to see some sort of interest rate increase as crazy, I know, as crazy as it sounds, just going on what's happening with the asset prices. 
In terms of asset prices, well, we're definitely seeing real estate prices go up all around the globe. Australia obviously up, US up, and that would also then fuel another interest rate increase rather than decreases. If those prices keep going up, why would they all of a sudden uh, drop or cut the interest rates, which would then fuel it even further? The US dollar, looking at this, this is going to be another piece that I do in a future video, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Looking at the 18.6 year cycle and what happens with the US dollar, a few comments came up from people thinking that we're in a, um, a major bull market here. And yeah, fair enough, you can see that they've got higher highs and higher lows coming back from the previous cycle. But what we've seen happen over the second half of the real estate cycle is that the US dollar tends to drop. This is the mid cycle, a little bit of a peak or pretty significant peak, but then you had a very significant collapse on the US dollar leading into the top of the 18.6 year cycle. So that right here, that is your top there around 1990s. And then you had the bottom around 1992 uh, timeframe there after that recession. So the US dollar was down at its low at the bottom of the real estate cycle. Started to run up in the first half of the real estate cycle. So the US dollar goes up here. That's the US dollar going up. This is typically the US, how am I gonna draw that? This is typically the US dollar going down and then sideways accumulation and then back up again. That tends to be what happens with the US dollar during the uh, cycle of the real estate cycle. So we're in the second half now. That was the mid cycle there. Let me get my words right. There's the mid cycle and that is your US dollar mid cycle. We've seen it move up, but now it's starting to come back down. I think once it takes out 100 to 102, then you're likely to see further downside here for the US dollar. So even with all these interest rate increases, it's only been enough to pause the US dollar and trade between around 102 and about 106. And so if we're to see even more increases that might be able to hold the US dollar at this price, uh, which would then just remain steady for the rest of the asset prices. If we saw the US dollar go up, could be more pressure on assets, but if they start to at least hold it, maybe we'll see the market come down. And eventually if there is one, maybe two cuts, you'd probably more than likely see this come down and then you'd see even more flow into assets. So the US dollar and the interest rates are a very interesting one in this second half of the cycle, especially with where they sit. So we'll continue to follow up with that on the channel. Uh, another quick reminder, the free crypto and economic report coming out today, link in the top of the video description, sign up to that. And if you guys are in Oz and you're looking for a crypto exchange, SwiftX right there for your free 20 bucks BTC using the link and international trading Bybit. All channel sponsors, user links, don't use them absolutely your call. Let's have a look at Max Payne here for BTC. I posted this earlier this morning. The pinned comment down below, let me know your thoughts here. Do you think Max Payne is to the upside or the downside? I think at this stage, it doesn't mean that it has to happen, but I think at this stage, it might be the pump. Something that really locks out even more people to the upside. And then we see that severe correction to the downside. And it seems like that's what the votes are saying this early on, uh, roughly 65. So two thirds of people think the max pain is to the upside. One third think the max pain is to the downside from here. Essentially locking those hopeful buyers that are waiting for that dump, it locks them out of the market because BTC pumps up. And the Google Trends is also, I guess, suggesting that we're starting to see more retail come into the market. So I've got five years here and each of these data points is over the course of a week. Bitcoin has risen to 54 on the search term. So we're really starting to see retail coming in now that we've hit new, fresh, all time highs. This is why we're so adamant to get into Bitcoin before it broke past that sort of $25,000 to $30,000 level back in 2023. I hate to keep bringing it up, but I just want to emphasize that in case you do want to trade or invest in the future. And the best thing you can do is remain with the market. I was shouting this all last cycle. Do not leave when the bear market comes. Do not leave because you'll miss what happens on the downside. You'll miss all of the possibility of getting in at the lower prices when the interest is down, you can see right here, when the prices are down, when no one cares, when everyone thinks it's over, that's the best time. Now the risk increases because the prices are higher and we can see much more volatility. So Google Trends is suggesting that we are back in the run with more retail coming back into the space. Last time we were at these levels at uh, 54, it was back in June when we hit that first bottom 
at $17,500. So an absolutely fantastic time to be getting into BTC, even though it did go just that little bit further in November. So that's the sort of interest that we're at. It's back during the, uh, the bear market days of 2022. The greed is still up there, still sitting in the 80s. We can track around these levels for several months. We did it last time from November through to about February. So about three months there with a significant correction along the way, but then it bounced straight back up. So it's not like we have to collapse from this point. It's not like we must see a significant correction from here with how far Bitcoin has gone up because the greed can stay up for a lot longer than we anticipate. We're just starting to see more of this retail come into the space looking at uh, well, the, the Google search terms. We're also seeing the S&P 500 remain relatively high prices, you know, in all time high territory. And with the halving coming up in about five weeks time, there might still be a little more interest out there. Now you've seen me talk about this, hit that like button down below. You've seen me talk about this in terms of the left and the right translated cycle. The cycle is the low to the low, the low to the low. It's not about the halving. It's not about Bitcoin hitting a new all time high after the halving or anything like that. It's low to the low so that you can use this type of cycle analysis across all markets. So I've got a couple of things in mind here. As I've mentioned before, if we are to see a continued run up, depending on where we get with this top. And I want to have a look at that in another chart as well. Some of the potential price targets here, uh, depending where we get with this top, then we would look to a correction from that point, which could then wipe out all of that extra frothiness and give us another leg to build a base from to then pump again to that upside. Ideally getting much closer to the right side of the cycle here, which comes in about a November. So that's where you'd want to see this top. Now, if Bitcoin can get to that point, the only difference here with the top coming now or in this first half of 2024 compared to the second half of 2024 is that any sort of decline would just be less. You'd have less time in that decline. So the longer Bitcoin goes up, the less time it goes down. Now, I continue to overlay this with the real estate cycle because probably got some pretty pretty big numbers to look at here to the upside for the stock market and uh, real estate leading into this peak. And it could go on a lot further than many of us realize. You know, we've looked at the idea that uh, markets can remain irrational longer than we can remain, remain solvent, which is why it's always a good idea just to keep trading with the trend. And if the trend is up, keep going with the trend, my friend. If we see that and we do see some sort of correction, some of that energy goes back into the stock markets, maybe into real estate, maybe uh, Bitcoin and cryptos just grind away for a bit before they're ready to go on that next leg. And where it corrects to is going to be the significant point here to identify the strength and the weakness. Now, the price points so far, while we still have this top in play here at about $73,000, you wouldn't want to see price go below, roughly speaking, about $48,000. Anything below 48 k any sort of major closes there on your weekly or your monthly, probably going to spell disaster and that that top was the end wherever that top comes in and that would mean we're probably going to uh, see lower prices even if bitcoin is to bounce back from there it might be a lower top now that's a long way off i'm talking months to potentially years here but that's something to keep in mind however if the correction is uh, above those levels above these tops here back in march of 22 top being there 48k then the probabilities increase that this is a healthy correction and it's just loading up again to springboard from to get to some higher prices. So that's the macro, the long term for BTC. In terms of the short term, before we get to another price target here, we were looking at the 50% level on the live stream last night on the channel. So uh, go back here, check out those videos, subscribe to the channel. You know what the deal is here. We were looking at this being a possibility of a short term resistance level because it was the 50% extension from the move that it had previously, previously done from Wednesday. So short-term stuff here, the market is holding out at the moment at 72,600. Should we get above that level? I've got a more of a macro target here, which could take weeks to months to reach because it's taken years to form. Years to form is the low from the previous cycle to the top of the previous cycle. So 3K to 69K projected from this current cycle low at 15K. The market's to get to 81,300, that would be a 100% repeat of the entire price cycle of last cycle. So the entire move from 3K to 69K projected from 15K. So I've got a nice little 
uh, price target here roughly around 81,300. Now I've come up with that. I'm not going to be wed to it whatsoever, but for the sake of putting together some degenerate upside and downside targets, should we see the price get to around 83,000 and we see a violent correction from there, let's have a look at some percentages. 20% would take us back to about 65K, which would be those previous tops. 30% would take us back to about 57K and a 40% correction would take us back to about 48K. And so from that point, it's pretty easy to see that any of those sort of corrections, even though they're super violent, 20, 30, 40%, it would feel like the world is over. Remember, we just saw a 15% correction a few days ago going from, I believe it was 67 down to 57. That felt like things were getting absolutely crazy. Imagine 40% coming down from 80, uh, $81,000. It would still be a healthy correction as it's above the previous tops here. That's what you want to see in a market. You want to see it hold up, even though you can see violent corrections. It's basically like a pressure test to the system. Is it able to withstand super, uh, super sized moves to the upside? Is it able to withstand super sized moves to the downside? If yes, tick that box, market can reaccumulate to then pump to the upside. Speaking of pumping to the upside, the altcoin market, just looking at some of these breakout points. So similar to BTC, where you've got this first lower swing top, which marks the weak point of the market. That's basically your complacency bounce before the collapse. Once we break through those complacency points, the market typically goes absolutely haywire. And that's what's happened with altcoins in the past. So have a look at this top in 2018, the tipping point market broke out of that top. Then you had several more months to get to the end, about 10 months to get to that final peak. But along the way, there were 60, 70% corrections. Some altcoins even did 80% corrections. But that's pretty much looking at the tipping point as it breaks through the complacency bounce before that collapse. So once it gets through that point, then you start to see a lot more retail enter. So where are we now? We are just a matter of a percent, a few percent away there, 12% to that peak. And altcoins definitely look like they want to get back above that level. By the end of this month, we'll get to know whether we will see a close above the 50%, so roughly $575 billion on your total cryptocurrency market cap, excluding Bitcoin, excluding ETH, and excluding stablecoins. Important to note there because this is the TIA crypto total market cap to give you a better idea of altcoins and only altcoins, not the other stuff. Essentially, a break above 50% would be a very, very good start to hold position, reaccumulate, and get back above. But at this rate, I don't think anyone's going to... Um, balk at the idea that altcoins could literally just break above that peak, which is 656 billion, and essentially just keep going to the, that all-time high. Nonetheless, even if you saw any sort of correction that was above that level now, if it was to get above 575, it's still a healthy correction. It would still be a healthy reaccumulation zone should it be able to break back past whatever that top comes in. So things are still looking pretty damn good for Bitcoin and altcoins. Just keep trading with the trend. Refer back to your whiteboards of wisdom notes here if you're feeling like you're getting some delicious feelings in your jellies or you're feeling like your, your chest is tightening up and you can't sleep at night. Remember, you'd have to decrease your risk if that's the case. And if you feel like you're missing out, put something little in so that you can still sleep at night knowing that you've got on board with some of these major moves to the upside. But always pay very close attention to your risk management. Everyone thinks it's about picking the top altcoin out there, but it really is about your risk management. Any, as I said in the live stream last night, you could give away all of the best altcoins that do 100x, but it will come down to how you sell, which is essentially your risk management. And the majority of people will screw it up. That's just unfortunately a pure hard fact of the market. That's why not everyone succeeds and why it's so heavily stacked against the majority because they have a, a gambler's mindset. They really just hope that the market is going to go up. They don't know where they're going to get out. They don't know where they'll get out if for a profit. They don't know where they would get out for a loss. They don't know how to take out small positions along the way. And it, it's really like training for a war. It's like training for a, a, a big sports game, some sort of big event that you've got coming up. You need to do the training to ensure that you are there to win at the end of the day. As always, I've enjoyed hanging out with you guys today. Rock on. I've got some new little features here. Oh, isn't that amazing? I'll see you guys at the next video. Make sure you hit the subscribe and the like button. Heaps coming up. Don't go anywhere. It's your home of macrocycle analysis. And I'll catch you at the next one. Till then, take care and peace out.